Chapter 29 Promises to the Sorrowful God would not have any of us remain pressed down by dumb sorrow, with sore and breaking hearts. He would have us look up to catch the rainbow of promise and reflect light to others. Oh, the blessed Savior stands by many whose eyes are so blinded by tears that they do not discern Him. He longs to clasp our hands firmly while we cling to Him in simple faith, imploring Him to guide us. It is our privilege to rejoice in God. If we will let the comfort and peace of Jesus into our lives, we shall be kept close to His great heart of love. Jesus was the man of sorrows, enduring heart anguish such as no language can portray. His heart is open to our griefs, our sorrows, and our trials. He has loved us with an everlasting love, and with loving kindness compassed us about. We may keep the heart stayed upon Him and meditate upon His loving kindness all the day. He will lift the soul above the daily sorrow and perplexity into a realm of peace. The Comforter is ours at all times and in all places, in all sorrows and in all affliction. When the outlook seems dark and the future perplexing and we feel helpless and alone, These are times when the Comforter will be sent in answer to the prayer of faith. Then Jesus looked upon his redeemed saints. Their countenances were radiant with glory. And as he fixed his loving eyes upon them, he said with his rich musical voice, I behold the travail of my soul and am satisfied. This rich glory is yours to enjoy eternally. Your sorrows are ended. There shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. We must learn to believe the promises, to have an abiding faith. Let us live in the sunlight of the cross of Calvary. Let us no longer dwell in the shadow, complaining of our sorrows, for this only deepens our trouble. Let us never forget, even when we walk in the valley, that Christ is as much with us when we walk trustingly there, as when we are on the mountain top, Walk not in the shadow of the cross. Do not give expression to weeping, lamentation, and woe, but encourage your soul to hope and joy. The cross points upward to a living Savior who is your advocate and is pleading in your behalf. When you are deeply shadowed, it is because Satan has interposed himself between you and the bright rays of the Son of Righteousness. The angels of heaven are sent forth to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. We know not now who they are. It is not yet made manifest who shall overcome and share the inheritance of the saints in light. But angels of heaven are passing throughout the length and breadth of the earth, seeking to comfort the sorrowing, to protect the imperiled, to win the hearts of men to Christ. Not one is neglected or passed by. God is no respecter of persons, and he has an equal care for all the souls he has created. I am sorry that you are in affliction and sorrow, but Jesus, the precious Savior, lives. He lives for you. He wants you to be comforted in his love. Do not worry. Trust in the Lord. Remember that not a sparrow falls to the ground without the notice of your heavenly Father. Those who have borne the greatest sorrows are frequently the ones who carry the greatest comfort to others, bringing sunshine wherever they go. Such ones have been chastened and sweetened by their afflictions. They did not lose confidence in God when trouble assailed them, but clung closer to His protecting love. Such ones are a living proof of the tender care of God, who makes the darkness as well as the light, and chastens us for our good. Go right forward, as if every prayer offered was lodged in the throne of God and responded to by the one whose promises never fail. Go right along, singing and making melody to God in your hearts, even when depressed by a sense of weight and sadness. Light will come, joy will be ours, and the mists and clouds will be rolled back. All heaven is interested in the happiness of man. Our Heavenly Father does not close the avenues of joy to any of His creatures.